Transformers is a thing that exists which I quite enjoy. I know I'm quite, uh, negative on this channel, but this franchise is something I wholly appreciate and love. Why? I don't know man, robots are cool, alright? I just like seeing the big red blue truck man punch the big silver purple man, okay? It's, it's all I want. Every couple of years, the adventures of the big red blue truck man gets rebooted in some way, and I'm fine with that. Because really, how many times can you tell the story of the Autobots and the Decepticons before it gets boring? You gotta change things up a bit, you know? Over the years we've had a, uh, let's see, uh... 23 shows! Oh Jesus Christ, I didn't think there'd be so many. Today I'll be ranking every single one of them because I, I've seen them all. Because I, I dropped out of college, now I'm living in- So first, ground rules. This is my opinion, this ain't fact. If you treat it like fact, then you suck. I'm ranking these in terms of my overall enjoyment of the show with a little bit of artistic merit thrown in. Also, we're only covering shows, so no Michael Bay fiascos or comic queries. And finally, Beast Wars Neo is not on the list because I can't understand it. As of right now, there is no English sub or dub, so whatever. If you want, you can leave your own rankings in the comment section below to prompt fights- Ah, uh, I mean discussion. Anyone's welcome to comment even if your opinion is wrong. Hell, even people like Diamond Bolt, Rodimus Primal, Komodan Cam, Johnny Flash, Joby the Hong, Hugh Adams, Vangelis, The Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer, Dr. Lockdown, Dr. Smooth, Crosshairs Productions, TF Fan Page 101, Erin New, Paper Plane, Cardboard Bots, Derivative Films, Chris McFeely, Optobotamus, Bobby Skullface, Emgo, Shartimus Prime, or Transformers Prime Speculator can join in the fun. Just expect a backlash. Oh, starting the video now. Driving to save the world from the evil Decepticons, the heroic Autobots are led by Optimus Prime. He's more than meets the eye, he's a robot in disguise. In the early 90s, Transformers got its first ever reboot in the form of Generation 2. It... it sucks. The toy line and the comics especially were completely lambasted by the fans, but we're talking about the cartoon today, which is... something. Just... just, just look at it! This was made in 1993, a whole three years before Beast Wars, so really, it's unfair of me to comment on the animation. <laughs> but I can't! So this intro plays, right? And the show starts? You're not ready for this. Constructicons have returned to our temporary base right on schedule. It's, it's, it's just Generation One, but every time it cuts to a new shot, it goes all like, <laughs> and the next shot appears on screen, and we zoom in on the screen, and that, and now we're in the next shot. Why? It's, it's so strange. Who approved this? We failed before through no fault of mine. But this time I shall not be denied. What the fuck? It's not even the least watchable show of the lot, because when you get down to it, you're just watching G1, but worse. There are better ways to watch this show. The only reason this is at the bottom of the list is because it's so goddamn pointless. Like, everything about it, why does this exist? <laughs> I think I can say with complete confidence that Transformers Titans Return is the worst piece of media I have ever consumed in my life. Me telling you how bad it is wouldn't even give you a smidgen of an idea of how utterly atrocious this incompetent, lazy, boring, rushed wank stain of a show really is. I, I honestly don't know where to start. In fact, I don't know if I should start. I could just leave it at that. If, if they didn't put any effort into making the show, why should I put any effort into critiquing it, right? Story, bad. Voices, bad. Animate, bad. Sound, bad. Show, bad. That about, that about covers it, I think. I'm gonna level with you guys for a minute. I don't remember a single thing that happened in this show. There were titans, and, and they returned. And then the engineer from TF2 came and he smacked the lady because Starscream was Mechagodzilla. And then, and then Will Wheaton says, What in the name of Red Alert's Lawn's Daylight samples is going on out there? I don't understand what he means. Oh, uh, then Mark Hamill shows up and it's over. 
I'm not even kidding, that's all I remember about this show. Even as I'm editing this and I'm forced to re-watch scenes from the show, I just... I, I don't get it. When it comes to opposing opinions, I'm not gonna fight you. I like some stuff you might not like and vice versa and we'll leave it at that. But... I make an exception with this show. If you like this show, then then I'll, I'll glue you to a lampshade. Here's the thing about Transformers Go. It's not good, but it kept my attention. So that must mean something, right? It's painfully bland. It's the most generic giant robot mecha anime I've ever seen. But despite that, I was interested to watch more because of its production value. Seriously, look at this. They reuse whole chunks of episodes. They, they don't even change the dialogue, I think. Uh, the, the theme song is terrible. I'm not a music guy, so my opinion's probably invalid, but it's just a guy screaming. He is literally screaming the song. I, I honestly don't know what to say. It, it's just sucky. It's, it's whatever. I don't know how to end this bit. Power of the Primes is the third installment of the Prime Wars trilogy, and probably the unironic best one. It's still not very good though. For the first time, it actually feels like Machinima is trying, and I don't know if I should commend them for that since it's like a requirement when you're making a show. Despite them trying, the show is still boring, poorly animated, poorly acted, and almost nonsensical. It's not as bad as the two that came before it, but it's barely an improvement. It has moments, I guess? Even then, the moments are just kind of like... Oh. That, that was something. It seriously feels like for every good thing in it, there's like a huge butt. For example, Ron Perlman's in it. And that's cool, I, I love Ron Perlman, he's, he's my favourite Hellman in the, the Hellman movies. But he's just awful in this. You got phoning it in, and then there's this. What changed your mind? You did, city speaker. Our fates are shared. I was wrong to think otherwise. That, my friends, is a monkey's paw if I've ever seen one. It only just came out and I've forgotten everything that happened in it. Quality television if I do say so myself. Transformers Combiner Wars is the room of Transformers shows. This was the first in Machinima's Prime Wars trilogy and it's comedy gold. The story, the acting, the animation, the characters, the pathetic sound design, it all comes together to create a true specimen of a show. There is one, one, aspect of this show that I unironically like, and that's the Starscream prequel. It was legitimately good and interesting, we're seeing a side of Starscream that's almost completely unexplored in the franchise. He's finally reached a position of power, which is what he's been yearning for in all these shows. But he feels lost and unsatisfied because he's aimless now which is shown to us as he cuts his engines and starts falling to the planet below. He has a new purpose, responsibility, and he sees it as a burden. So it's, it's artsy fartsy, but I think it's kinda neat, sue me. The whole thing is completely undone as the show goes on anyway, so whatever. How long have you been planning this? A very long time. But I had no idea all this power would be so... Satisfying. Really, Combiner Wars gets a glowing recommendation from me as how to not write just in general. If you want to know the worst possible way to write characters, story, emotions, etc., watch Combiner Wars. It's great. Don't let this happen. I love this show. I don't care what anyone says. It's so awful that it's spectacular. Wanna know why this show is so good? Here, I'll play a clip from the first episode. It's 
significant buzzing bumblebee. So Soundwave just exploded through a stock green screen wall explosion. T posed over to Bumblebee while playing a 500 hertz tone, which was deafening to Bumblebee apparently, and then said, Significant buzzing Bumblebee. Amaze, absolutely outstanding. The company that produced Cyber Missions, TG Studios, were commissioned by Hasbro to create 13 episodes within 11 months. Then circumstances occurred which reduced the time frame to three months. Come out, come out wherever you are. Let's see how smart you are without your ugly head, Autobot scum. Honestly, this show just speaks for itself, so I'm just gonna play clips, whatever, I can't... It, just, just watch, watch this shit. I would rather concede this battle and live to fight you another day, Ironhide. Bludgeon, wait! Next time, I might not be so nice. Why are you stopping? Even in the middle of a fight, you need to be mindful of your surroundings. Fire truck that shoots fire? Well, you know the Decepticons. They think they're all hot and stuff. This show is probably the most infamous of the lot. Whenever the question of what the worst show in the franchise is raised, Energon is usually the one that crops up the most. I mean, fair enough, the CGI animation is awful, the dialogue is stilted and nonsensical, the plot exists, and some of the translations are just fucked. It's honestly like watching a train wreck, but it's an entertaining train wreck. The train's full of clowns and circus shit, and it's crashing into the fireworks factory. It's amazing. But as much flack as this show gets, I think there's some stuff in it that's genuinely kinda alright. They don't like to save the show, but they exist. Like when they couldn't be bothered to use the 3D models, they just use traditional animation and it's a nice little throwback to Armada. We're getting to that, bear with me. I also like the character of Shock Blast, who was kind of interesting, I guess. I actually thought the show had a pretty good start too. Not a great start, but there was potential there. Again, I don't have much to say about this one. It just kind of speaks for itself. Look, Diamond Bolt did a huge video on why Energon has garnered the reputation it has. Just watch that. I don't have much I can really add, it's bad. Uh, uh, in, in, in Japan, each episode begins with a warning telling kids to get away from the TV. Transformers Super God Master Force is a show with a title so good that it's practically begging to be watched. The show itself is bizarre and crazy and probably one of the biggest departures from the typical formula the majority of the shows have. It feels more like a Super Sentai show, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, mind you. Some of the best shows in the franchise are the ones that changed up the formula, shows that took risks, shows that did something new. But is Master Force an entertaining show? <laughs> Kinda. Master Force is a bit aimless and messy. It feels like the show can't even decide who its main character is. Initially, it's the Pretenders, then it's the Headmasters, then it's Optimus Prime. But wait, he's not actually Optimus Prime. He's called Gin... Ginrai? Ginrai? Gin... On top of that, the entire Generation 1 continuity is damaged beyond repair in this show. No one seems to remember what Transformers are, and I'm not 100% sure what year this is supposed to be set in. The wiki says this takes place after G1, but it looks like it's just back to 1980-whatever. I mean, Series 3 onwards of G1 was set in 2005, and... I'm not gonna start bashing on this show for being different, but it just doesn't feel like they try anything unique with this new idea they have. It's kind of boring. It feels like I've seen this done in a million other generic giant robot animes. Overall, it's as bland as this YouTube channel. Hell, even the theme song kind of reflects this. It's way too chill for the subject matter and it's kind of hilarious. Anyway, uh, Master Force, you can probably skip it. Unless you're into ball-achingly dull lectures about the inner workings of a V8 engine as told by Orson Welles.
Transformers The Headmasters has a lot riding on it, but overall it's just kind of okay. I think it has some good moments, but in terms of the whole show, I wouldn't say there's anything particularly interesting or noteworthy about it. Is what I would say if the goddamn English dub didn't exist. Seriously, I've spoken about it before, but the dub is excellent, and I'd honestly recommend watching it just for that. But I think you came here for an actual discussion, so here we go. Headmasters is fun for the first few episodes, but it gets really redundant really quickly. Again, like Master Force, it just kind of feels aimless, and soon enough the episodes just start getting really samey. There's a couple highlights though, like there's this one episode where Chrome Dome reunites with his old friend Jack. There's a Transformer called Jack. Jack gets kidnapped by the Decepticons as a bomb placed inside him and is mind controlled into blowing up the Autobots base. What follows is a legitimately intense scene where they gotta stop Jack from blowing up Maximus, and spoilers, it ends with an effective emotional climax. Jack! <laughs> Good shit, man. Damn. Shame the rest of the show never comes close to this. I also really like how this show has this really chill vibe throughout. For the most part, the show is just a bunch of robots relaxing, having a good time playing poker. I don't know, it's kind of refreshing to see this sort of thing every now and again, you know? On top of that, the theme song is pretty great. Even if the show wasn't really all that engaging to me, the intro would just get me goddamn pumped, you know? Now, I wouldn't go as far to say that Headmasters is a bad show, it's just kind of mediocre. It has its moments, but overall it's kind of dry. The majority of the characters aren't particularly interesting, the action is stilted and kind of boring, and the plot makes as much sense as your average TEDx talk. Now some people have complained that Doctor Who is essentially a conservative mythology. Watch it if you feel like it, but just don't expect anything special. Unless you're watching the dub, then expect a lot. In 1977, the James Bond movie The Spy Who Loved Me was released. It's often hailed as the best James Bond movie, if not one of the best action films of all time. A motif of the James Bond movies is that at the end, they say James Bond will return in whatever the next film in the series is. The Spy Who Loved Me ends with James Bond will return in For Your Eyes Only. Okay, the next Bond film is called For Your Eyes Only, cool. Now, another film came out in 1977, you might have heard of it, I don't know, it's called Star Wars? So the guys at Eon Productions were like, oh, people like sci-fi action, quick, make a movie with James Bond in space. So then, instead of Fear Eyes Only, Moonraker was released a couple years later, which involves James Bond going to space and fighting guys with laser beams and stuff. The fact that the studio didn't even try to hide the fact that they were riding off of the Star Wars hype is so amazing to me. It's one of the greatest cash grabs in film history, to be honest. So why am I bringing this up? It's only because somehow Robots in Disguise 2015 is even more of a cash grab than goddamn Moonraker and it blows my mind. I mean, here's the thing about these shows, when you get down to it, they're trying to sell toys, but some, not all, but some of these shows have actual substance in there. They might actually tell a decent story, create interesting characters that grow and change over the course of the show, you know what I mean. Robots in Disguise is none of this, it does the bare minimum of what can count as a show. It has a story, not a particularly interesting one but it's there. The characters exist, they don't really develop or grow or learn anything meaningful. All of this wouldn't be so bad if the show didn't constantly act like it had more to it. It's a really surreal experience. This might just be me, but I felt like it had to constantly justify itself as a sequel to Transformers Prime. Whenever they do a callback or someone from Prime shows up, it doesn't feel necessary. A lot of people liked Prime, it was kind of a big deal amongst cartoon fans when it came out, and it seems like the creators of Robots in Disguise took note of this because they have to remind you every chance they get that Ridge 15 is a sequel to Prime. Season 2 onwards is basically one huge member diss. Member Bulkhead, he was in Prime. Do you remember do you remember Soundwave? He was in he was in Prime, so was Ratchet too. Starscream's back. Star Hey, speaking of Starscream, he was probably the best part of the whole show. His whole story arc was the definite high point of the show and I kinda loved it. Another thing about this show that I kinda love is the aesthetic. When it's utilized well, it looks pretty great. An example off the top of my head is this one fight scene from the middle of season two where they're in this concert. But the character designs are kinda weird looking. Bumblebee especially has this fucking weird neck. It honestly feels like for every good thing in this show, there's something bad to even it out, which results in probably the most middle of the road show in the franchise. It's not bad, but it's not good. It lives in a state of being that's just kind of being, you know? Watch Moonraker instead. Yes, my name is Bond, James Bond. 
I am looking for Dr. Goodhead. You just found her. A woman. Transformers Cybertron, more like Transformers Cyber Gone to Get Dinner because I stopped watching the show when I finished watching it. Transformers Cybertron is pretty alright. It has quite a lot of stuff I enjoy, but it has quite a few of the same problems as Energon. The biggest issue still being the CGI models. Overall, the 3D animation is better, but the models still look kind of shit, and they don't meld with the 2D animation at all. I wouldn't say it ruins the show or nothing, but still. Something I like about this show is that there's this odd sense of finality to it. This is the third and final installment of the Unicron trilogy and it just feels like the end. And I'm struggling to think how to explain this point so I'm just going to give up. Let me tell you, when I'm sat on the couch and I'm watching Cybertron, I know I'm in for a fun time. It's a very enjoyable show. It's the embodiment of mid-2000s cheese, from the voice acting to the goddamn music. The theme song is banging. It's really silly and overblown, but you'd be hard-pressed to find someone that doesn't remember it. The Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. My favourite thing about this show by far is goddamn Signal Lancer. He's basically an Autobot who turns into a streetlight and his only friend is another Autobot who's a payphone right across the street. He He's beyond a minor character, you could almost say he's an extra. He has a total of like six lines in the whole show but he's just so wholesome, it's really sweet. I know it sounds like that just because Signal Lancer was my favourite thing about the show it must mean I hated it or something. But really this show was pretty damn fine. It was just a lot of fun and... I don't know how to break it to everyone, but I kind of forgot most of the stuff that happened in it. Every conversation about Transformers Armada starts off like a stand-up routine. What's the deal with Armada? Transformers Armada is like a glorified balancing act that disappointed me while also living up to all my expectations. People love Armada, and some fans say it's the best show in the franchise, and I can totally see why people would say that, but I just don't agree. I mean, let's get this out of the way right now. Transformers Armada isn't bad. I'd say it actually does some stuff really well. The whole Starscream thing was pretty great. I liked how they handled Unicron. Thrust was neat, and this show has like 20,000 different theme songs, and each one is as GOAT as the last. Yes, GOAT. Greatest of all time. You got the one that everyone knows. It's like an instrumental cover of the original theme. Then you got the one that plays sometimes in the show, which again is just hype. It makes me nostalgic for the early 2000s when all music absolutely sucked. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Then you got the two Japanese ones, the first one is pretty good, but the second one is low-key one of my favourite theme songs in the franchise. Big sex. Anyway, Armada... Hmm. The worst thing about Armada is its presentation, which is such a broad term, but I do kind of mean it. The animation, voice acting, and sound design all kind of suck. Now, I haven't watched the sub version, I only saw the dub, which is apparently the worst version of the show. It just feels lazy. Any scene that could be good has a load of little issues that hold it back, like spoilers. The scene where Optimus Prime dies is actually well done, for the most part. The build-up is pretty good and the actual death is cool, but it's immediately followed up by awful overlapping dialogue. Huh? The air! It's still there! Optimus! And it, it just doesn't... it doesn't fit. My biggest issue with this show is the whole first half. The, the first, let's say, 20 to 25 episodes are kind of the worst thing ever. I mean, when the show gets good, it is pretty decent, but you have to sit through trash manifests to get to the good stuff, which I don't think is worth it. I was horribly disappointed by Armada. I heard such good things about it, and overall, I do think it has a bit more good than bad, 
but it's a very narrow margin. At least compared to Cybertron, I remembered most of the stuff that happened in it. So everything I say from now on is now invalid because I've proven I have the wrong opinions. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS.